Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Austin from Training Tall. And yeah, I'm six foot eight, but Training Tall is all about giving you the tools, the strategies, and the mindset to take your fitness and health and performance above the average. And today we're starting a brand new series, essentially just discussing rowing form. You submit me, you submit to me, you rowing, and then we kind of talk about the good and the bad about your form. And hopefully this provides as um, as like a cool opportunity for people to take a look at how other people row and sort of how I analyze technique and try to help people improve their rowing. So in our first case right here, we are looking at um, an Orange Theory member who has let me film their rowing technique. And we're just gonna go through using this coaching app that I've got and it's the, kind of the first time I'm using it. So might draw some shapes and stuff here on the screen. Uh, but we're gonna do what we can and just sort of analyze this row. So a little background on this row. This person is rowing at around 30 strokes per minute. And we're just thinking of like just general rowing form. It's not necessarily a sprint or like a long distance row. It's just kind of some general stuff. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So I filmed this in slow motion so that way we can analyze sort of each chunk, the path of the rowing stroke, etc. So taking a look here, we'll start off at the finish. And I wanna start these videos by talking about the good, the good of the form, and then we'll go into the, what could use some improvement. So starting here at the finish, one thing that is awesome is, I would say the layback is very, very good. Getting that body past vertical. A lot of us tend to struggle with um, getting that lean back, and the lean back can really hold us back. And so while a lot of us end up rowing vertically like this, um, here leaning back at this angle, that's exactly what you need to really transfer the momentum of your rowing stroke. So let's go ahead and come out of the finish there and up towards the catch. So as we can see, really, really nice job with the body lean forward. We had that lean back um, at the finish of the rowing stroke and then kind of passing through vertical and then at a good forward lean towards the catch. That is a really, really nice lean. And if we look here at the very, very front of the catch, that the body positioning, um, she's doing a great job of not sort of having her lower back tucked underneath us. A lot of the time we can end up getting our butt curved underneath our bodies, but she's doing a great job here of keeping a pretty flat line from, uh, from the back all the way down. I mean, it's a little curved, but it could be a lot worse. But this position in general is pretty good. And um, if we look at the compression of the legs here, doing a nice job of getting the shins to vertical or essentially trying to stack the knees with the ankles. Just a little shy of that, but again, it's at a higher stroke rate, around 30 strokes per minute like I talked about. And so it's a little bit more challenging to keep that real full range compression um, with those higher stroke rates. And because there wasn't any specific parameter as far as like do a long distance row or do a sprint row, um, just in general, it's pretty good compression. If we look closely, we can see that the heels are still pretty planted on the footboards. And to have your shins that vertical with your, shin, with your heels still on the footboards, that's a lot of really good ankle mobility, a lot of good flexibility in the calf muscles. And if you're someone who struggles um, with getting that full compression and your heels really lift off the ground, that's an idea that you'd want to stretch out your calves more to help you get more of that compression while keeping the majority of your foot on the ground, or I'm sorry, on the foot plate. Okay, and yeah, so body positioning is really nice as far as the body angle and the leg compression. Those are some really, really good points of this rowing form. Now let's get into the improvements here, and we will start with the catch here. Now if we notice, and we take a look at the handle and the shoulder height, if we kind of draw a line from handle to shoulder, we can see that the hands are actually dropped pretty far low down relative to shoulder height. And what this does is on the drive back, that doesn't, that means that our lats, you know, the big lat, the big back muscles that are in charge of helping you translate the drive through the foot plates into the handle, they're not quite as engaged as they could be. And we can see this here if we hit play, we can see that right away the hands dropped down. I'll rewind just a little bit more here. We can see again back at that catch, as soon as the drive begins, hands drop, and right there you lost a couple inches of connection in that, in that initial start of the rowing stroke. 
So if I was to change that, what I would recommend here is working on raising the handle just a little bit more. As far as the body lean, it's where it, exactly where it needs to be. But instead of taking that handle from this position to here, if we could get a little more lift in that handle and try to create more of a flat line, that one's kind of excessive, but somewhere kind of in between that, even a little bit more of a lift in that handle will help engage those back muscles a little bit more and allow for a more connected start to the rowing stroke. And it's at the start, at the catch, where a lot of us lose a lot of our free power that we have, we just aren't connected in that moment. So that would be my biggest cue um, for this catch. Again, handles a little bit higher so that we can get some lat engagement because it isn't until about, it isn't about right here, we can see that the arms connect in at about that position right there. So that's already like one fourth of the drive where we didn't quite have that arm connection. And then traveling through towards the finish, doing a nice job of getting the legs flat before we start to bend in the arms. You can see that the legs are flattened, the arms are still straight, just starting to bring in the handle. That is really good. Um, and as we bring in that handle in towards the finish, now we can see that the wrist and elbow position isn't quite optimal. As we can see, there's a bit of that wrist bend as the handle gets pulled in. And so what, that, what that's doing is that's activating our wrist flexor muscle group, the muscles in charge of our grip essentially. Um, when our wrist is bent in that position, because we basically drop our elbows too low, that can cause forearm fatigue throughout a row. And for anyone who's done a long duration row where they're trying to go at a pretty hard pressure, we can really start to feel that forearm burn if we're someone who has a bit of that elbow drop as we bring in the handle. So the idea there is maybe bring in the handle just an inch lower and a little bit more raise of the elbows to get that flat wrist. The flat wrist, the flat wrist really is essential for minimizing the use of those wrist flexor muscles. Um, but also our grip does play into the, using those muscles too. We can see that her grip here is not like death gripping. She's not clenching the handle, which is really good. Another good thing I forgot to point out. So let's go ahead and talk about on the return back up, on the recovery. So we know that the sequence should be arms out, then the lean of the core, and then a bend of the legs in as smooth of a fashion as we can. And as we watch the recovery here, we can see that the arms and the knees are starting to bend together at the same time. Now that's not necessarily how we want to row ideally. When it comes to sprint rowing, where we're rowing like max effort strokes, there's some wiggle room for that. There really is. Um, but in general, when we're trying to get our long, consistent form, we want to make sure that we can get those arms out all the way straightened first, then lean the body, and then bend the legs. One thing to always keep in mind here is we always want to make sure that the handle is going over the knees before the knees bend. And we can see that as, as she's rowing here, the knees are bending quite a bit before the handle goes over them. So that's something to watch for. And the best way to work on that is to just think arms finish in, arms out immediately. Like just think of like just arms in, arms out. And the quicker you can get your arms out and away, the easier it's gonna be to get the handle over the knees before they bend. But also we can see here too, the knees are bent, the handle is over the knees, but the body, the body is still vertical in this position. And that is not the proper way we want to load the front of the stroke. And that is because once we get, if we go vertical while the handle's already past the knees, that means if we're gonna get our body lean forward, it ends up happening at the very end of the rowing stroke. You basically come up to the catch and then lean the body, almost like a lurch forward of the upper body. And that's what can create back strains if we're not careful. If we can instead think about establishing our body lean first before we end up compressing the legs back up. So again, getting our body more in this line position, that angled forward, that 11 o'clock, before we start to bring up the legs, you're essentially loading yourself up with just the legs and you don't risk any sort of lurch with that back at the very front end. Again, as we come back up, we kind of see the same thing with the handle drop. Again, would want to work on keeping those hands a little bit higher. And then as we drive back, great drive with the legs, swing and pull with the arms as far as like the sequencing goes. But just on the way back up, we want to get those hands out, that body over first. Uh, a lot of the things that a lot of us struggle with. 
We can see for a second here the quick rowing of going through that stroke. Let's see if we can get it in, in a fast pace for a moment. Boom. Okay, never mind. The video is not that long. Um, but that is sort of a general analysis of this rowing form um, that we see here. We can see that we need to, at the finish of the stroke, get the elbows up a little bit more, maybe pulling that handle a little bit lower, really working on getting the arms out first, leaning the core, and then bending the legs to come back up, and then keeping the hands a little bit higher at the front end. Other than that, the lean back is good. The front compression, the, the compression of the legs, the body lean forward is awesome. So just, some, just a couple things to keep in mind, and that's the review of this rowing form. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this style of video. Were you able to pull out a couple key points from that? What else would you add if you have any sort of critique to add into this? Would love to hear your thoughts and would love to hear how you think we can make this format of video a little bit more fun, a little bit more exciting, and what you would like to see. So please let me know. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, let me know what you think, and remember if you're looking for training, I have my new platform, Hit Plus, which is live now. Follow along workouts with me, rowing workouts, body weight training, strength, flexibility, mobility, anything you could want in a follow along fashion. You can check that out down in the links down below, as well as my rowing ebooks too. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.